Welcome everyone to the newest edition of the Eric Avisar podcast. I'm now going to talk about Liverpool's most interesting and compelling unit, certainly the deepest part of the team, the midfield. Now, we've got to start things off by talking about Philippe Coutinho. He is the magician. He is an incredible player, potentially. I say potentially because he's shown those moments of being truly an incredible player, but he just hasn't quite put it all together yet. I mean, he is Liverpool's two-time reigning player of the year, but, you know, when you're looking at a number 10, you know, the same role that Marco Royce occupied under Jurgen Klopp at Borussia Dortmund, he has scored 53 goals in 122 games. By comparison, Coutinho, in a much tougher Premier League, has managed 28 goals in 145 appearances. This is really the year that Coutinho needs to take that next step. Being 24 years old, he's entering his true, true prime, or he can play his absolute best. Can he become world class? Certainly the potential is there, but time will tell. Much of our success with Liverpool Football Club hinges on Coutinho. The same can be said for Roberto Firmino, who suffered a torrid start at Anfield, scoring only one goal in 2015 for the Reds, but he truly came into his own under Klopp, settling in brilliantly, scoring 10 goals in the second half of the season. Now, Firmino is probably the smartest player in the team. I think he brings a little bit more in terms of decision-making than Coutinho. Certainly uh, has a great eye for goal and you know fits into the pressing system very well. So Firmino is going to play a massive role this season. I mean, Klopp has called him the player of the preseason. You know, he brings a ton to the table. And, you know, there's also going to be a lot hinging, of course, on Sadio Mane, the big money signing for the Reds, spending over $30 million, uh, to pry him out of Southampton. And, you know, a lot of people were shaking their heads at first. Another player from Southampton? Really? Yes, really. This guy is going to be by far the best signing Liverpool have made from Southampton and perhaps one of the best signings ever. He's still very young in his mid-20s. And he's the owner of the fastest hat trick in Premier League history. He scored three goals for the Saints in under three minutes. I don't know if that'll ever happen again. Now, Mane comes with blistering pace, just truly killer speed, bringing an element to the side that they haven't had in a long time. And you saw that really come to fruition starting off with uh, with Barcelona when he just tore up the Catalans tremendously. And, you know, he's going to be just a nightmare for defenses, especially linking up with the forwards up top. So with those three really probably leading the attack, being the first names on the team sheet when Klopp lines up, whether it be the 4-3-3 or probably more often the case, the 4-2-3-1, those are the three, which leaves us with some really super reserves. The first name that comes to mind is Adam Alana, a lad who you know came in also with a hefty price tag from Southampton, but really failed to show at first what he's truly capable of. I think he's finally come into his own under Klopp. I mean, certainly who can forget that incredible goal where he snatched those three points at the death last season from Norwich City. That was a tremendous confidence boost. And Lallana's probably the most two-footed player on the team, a dynamic player, and he's starting to show that end product that you really want to see. So I hope that Lallana is willing to be the super sub because most games I don't see him getting picked for the starting eleven. Now, in terms of the brightest young prospect, i got to give the shout-out to Shea Yojo, the guy who, you know, had a difficult loan with Wolves, but when he came back to Anfield, I mean, wow, what blistering pace, what great dribbling ability. You love the way he moves, not just the speed, the blistering speed, but also just the fluidity in the way he runs. I mean, he has such a bright future ahead of him. It's nice to see that he hasn't been loaned back out, although hopefully he can make a quick recovery from his back injury. So now we start turning our attention towards the other big money signing of the summer, Jorginho Wijnaldum. You know, coming from Newcastle, scored 11 goals for relegated side. Pretty impressive. Dirk Kout singing his praises. You know, he says that the lad has three lungs. Whoa. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. He's very positionally versatile. He can play in the center of the, the pitch. He can play in the wing, play up, you know, towards the number 10 role. But, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. I think he's going to move around a little bit, but most likely uh, the place for him to start things off is in the center of the park. He's kind of had a bit of a tough start in the preseason, but, you know, he's still getting settled in, so it's understandable. So time shall tell where it starts. But I see him probably lining up alongside Emre Chan in many games. 
uh, you know, in the center of the pitch. Chan, though, is just such a hardworking player. He brings so many great leadership qualities, the vocal leadership, the commanding presence, the ball winning. But what I love about him, what reminds me of Steven Gerrard, not that I'm saying he's going to replace him, not going that far. Steven Gerrard's irreplaceable. But what they have in common is when you see a guy score a goal for Liverpool, who is the first guy to celebrate, to hug him, to, you know, really enjoy the moment? You know, more times than not, it's Emery Chan. And I think it's the little things like that that make him worthy of the captain's armband. Even at the young age of 22, I think Emery Chan should wear the armband, especially considering that Jordan Henderson is probably no longer in the first 11 for Klopp. And, you know, a lot of people have been calling for him to get sold. I understand where they're coming from, but they kind of forget too easily how good he was. But that's the key word, was. You wonder if this uh, lingering heel injury is going to be something that he has to carry with him for the rest of his career. The same fears are shared over the aging James Milner. And Milner, I think he's starting to realize that he's not really going to get many games, if at any, in the midfield this season, which is why Klopp has been, you know, playing him at left back, but more on that and that problem later. Now, but when it comes to Henderson, it's going to be a very, very difficult year for him. Certainly last year was the worst year of his Liverpool career. But we can always, time will tell how things play out. And, you know, to make things even more murky in the midfield, we're looking at a tremendous new signing. Perhaps when we look back, one of the best signings in the club's history, if he stays and reaches his potential with Marco Gruwich. Gruwich has scored three goals in the preseason. Of course, you know, that uh, headed goal, the, pre the chip right over the keeper's head, truly a wonderful, wonderful goal. And he's six foot three. He's huge. He's domineering. I think he's going to fit in really really well it's so exciting to see such bright young talent and you know you can trust Jurgen Klopp's eye for young talent he just has that proven track record and I think Gruwich will add to that list meanwhile on the opposite end of the spectrum Lucas Leva has been such a loyal servant to the club I mean he's been at Liverpool since 2008 by far the longest tenure member of the Reds now that Martin Skirtle has been sold and Lucas year after year speculation has been right that he's going to leave he's gone he's going to get sold and certainly you can make the case that he came closer than ever to leaving with a Galatasaray's bid but I think Klopp realizes that you know he's a guy who's not going to complain when he's not getting picked of course he like anyone wants to play but he's not going to be that team cancer in the locker room he's a great lad he's a you know and he does the job he does the job at, you know, he lacks the mobility at this point, which is probably why he's not going to start many games, but he certainly brings value to the dressing room. Now, we still have youngsters that are going to be fighting to get on the side, the likes of, you know, Chiravella, Stewart. Stewart, you know, is uh, one of, another one of those guys who's very humble, just puts his head down at the grindstone and gets after it. We could see him getting a lot more game time this season, especially if things, you know, if, if injury problems hit, who knows what will happen. Stewart got an extended run of games last season. I think he's starting to carry uh, that confidence moving forward. Now, in terms of Lazar Markovic, he's still on the books. They paid way too much for him, and I think the Reds are realizing they're going to have to take a loss on Lazar Markovic. And it's unfortunate because, you know, he is talented, but there just doesn't seem to be a future for him at Anfield. So we have a loaded, loaded midfield going on here at Liverpool, and it's very exciting to see how things will play out. I truly think at the end of the day, whether or not Liverpool crack the top four largely hinges on the chemistry and the interplay between Philippe Coutinho, Roberto Firmino, and Sadio Mane. So time will tell whether the Reds will be back in the Champions League.